Good afternoon, everyone. The Hudson Bay Hurricane, extratropical cyclonic low from the Arctic Circle down over Hudson Bay, passing over Canada, dropping temperatures off a cliff. Top image, Hudson Bay Hurricane. Bottom image, Cyclone Nuri, 2014, the strongest storm ever recorded in the Arctic. Additionally, a second hurricane circulation pattern is over the Arctic. Everywhere it's dark blue is below zero, so it's not possible for ice to be melting. Snow all across the Arctic Circle right now. This storm is heading toward the Scandinavian countries and Iceland. They are going to receive snow in August. Arctic sea ice still in the center of the pack. Sea surface temperatures top two weeks ago, bottom yesterday. Although not making news, a polar hurricane rolled over the Hudson Bay, now aptly named the Hudson Bay Hurricane. This extratropical low came rolling off the polar circle, heading southeast, passed directly over Hudson Bay, dropping temperatures off a cliff. Winds at 70 miles per hour, two miles an hour below hurricane strength. Notice the Canadian map, that yellow star is the direct center of the eye passing through the Hudson Bay. Top photo here from the Hudson Bay hurricane, bottom photo. This is from Storm Nuri, the strongest storm to pass through the polar circle area ever recorded just a year and a half ago. A look here at the water vapor, easily discernible where the spinning action in the atmosphere is occurring. Something to notice in this graphic here is how the cyclonic winds are pushing that weather front forward. You can easily see how the air is being disturbed and pushed forward in front of that low. A bit wide out here on the visual. GOES-13 satellite even indicates it as a strong cyclone over Hudson Bay. And if you do stop for a moment and take a look at what NASA has written Cold, dry air. I thought it was supposed to be the warmest year ever. This is Cyclone Nuri in the Bering Sea, 2014, November. Very similar in shape and appearance, but Nuri was a little more intense. We shouldn't be getting these winter storms like this rolling off in August, dropping snow. Another look at a global temperature measurement showing downward trend as well. So these NASA releases, that you're seeing saying warmest year ever, I will pull you right here to the satellite data. Remote sensing systems, RSS, shows that global temperatures are decreasing. The Hudson Bay hurricane, extremely rare weather phenomenon, but now there's another hurricane circulation pattern over the entire Arctic. It started on the 15th of August and it still continues through today. Everywhere it's blue, it is snowing. It is below zero in these temperatures. I pulled it's minus 1.4 C. You can see on the left side, the latitude, longitude, and the temperature. These are ground surface temperatures. And here's my forecast and here's my call. That low is heading toward the Scandinavian countries. They are going to see record surprise cold and snow in August, beginning approximately the 24th over Norway, Sweden, and Iceland, specifically these areas also north of the Ural Mountains, because as this low passes over Greenland, it's going to pull all that cool air into the storm with it as it proceeds further to the southeast, right over northern Europe. Interestingly, though, those temperatures are all showing below freezing, below 32 Fahrenheit, below zero C. Yet when we come over here and look at some different satellite data, they're showing it's raining up there. It can't be raining if it's minus one degree Celsius or 30 degrees Fahrenheit. It's got to be snow. I don't know why it's so misleading. Why would they not want to show snow in the middle of August in the Arctic? It bucks the narrative. That's why. They call it a polar vortex, strong setup where it's strong and confined. It is so strong and confined that it has turned into a hurricane circulation over the North Pole. And it's the second one in a matter of a week and a half. This one's gonna move over Europe, and this is Cyclone Nuri here. 
2014, Orange Star is the center of that storm. 924 millibars, extremely low. This storm that just passed, 962. And this current low that's coming off the Arctic, 967, but forecast to decrease into the 950s, which would put it nearly on par with the November Nuri storm that crossed the Pacific. This is in August. This is going to snow across northern Europe. It's snowing across the Arctic, yet we're told it's all-time record highs. There is a polar cyclone developing. It's the second one. The configuration and spiraling into the center eye is becoming more pronounced. Over the next couple days, it should develop and show an eye. So be ready for surprise snows. This is the front view where the storm is heading. The green circle is where it will be in another four days. The periphery countries around the coastal areas, including all of Norway, Finland, Iceland, north of the Ural Mountains in Russia will also receive snows in August. As always, Ryan up on the Twitter page showing up some good graphics. Pink means a foot of snow in the middle of August in the Arctic. We were told it's going to melt off to nothing. There would be no polar ice left. It would completely melt. Yet we're getting a foot of snow in the middle of August. Arctic sea ice also recovering, but we keep being told that it's low, 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 and it's going to disappear. Yet, when you see clearly, it's right in the center there. This is from NSIDC's own ice satellite measurement data. Global sea surface temperatures from August 1st. We jump up to August 16th. Two weeks difference. I lined these up. The arrow, black, pointing to the bottom. Notice the difference of the cooler waters up there. And the big question on everybody's mind, where is La Nina heading? How deep will it be? How cold will it be? How fast will it get cold? Well, so far, it seems to be matching up with 1997-98 on the decline. I put the green star there. You can see approximately where the crossover is. They're right at that conversion point. My forecast is a straight drop-off that will eventually eclipse the 1972-1973 measurements at probably 2.5 negative. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. And many of you ask, how do I get prepared? Well, you should be prepared anyway for just normal emergencies that happen, regardless of this longer term trend of cooling temperature and food price rises. Just going about your daily life, you should be prepared for at least some contingencies. You know, how are you going to get your water? Even if you have to get some brackish water, you can still filter it. Medical kit, do you have one of those? Just a simple one around the house that would be used where it's easily packable and it's portable. Additionally, do you know how to grow your own food? How about some seeds? What types of seeds do you have? And can some of these seeds that you have withstand the cooling and abnormally dry or wet conditions with the changing temperature variations in our seasons?